Well, that was illuminating. So, yeah, he figures he might as well just go home now. I don't think he actually signed back in in the office or whatever, but who cares about that? There's your little message from Tatsia telling you to go meet him. He's going to be on the Osei Bridge as well. Lover's run of you, bitch. Man, Kiryu just gets around a lot, doesn't he? And you won't get too far until, uh... You see this glowing thing there? Well, somebody's coming to phone you to talk about it. And it's Yurikawa. Anyways, there's something she forgot to tell us today when we were talking to her. But... Nowadays, uh... uh Nagasu Taxi is gonna get all involved in picking up trash. That sounds kind of weird for a taxi company to do, but... Uh, it's for image re uh, image rehabilitation. Apparently, in the world of the taxi drivers, a bunch of screwballs who will just uh, toss trash out of their window and people are getting, like, kind of pissed about it. So anyways, Nagasu Taxi is going to be like, hey, we're not like those. Look at us. We're actually picking up trash. Aren't we great? And, yeah. So she's just asking... Uh, Kiryu if he's going to take part in this and anybody and like uh like most collection things in these games if you do well enough you'll uh you'll get like prizes for your efforts this one's no different well that's a funky cap in the back before I never noticed that before oh once he said that so yeah, like most open world games, there's like little collection things that really kind of motivate you to explore all the environs, see what the place has to offer. Because you know, they take a great pains to model this whole place, so they want you to check everything out. It's probably the best possible way. It also gives you something to do in the game world. That's something I hate about open world games, is when they make something that's like super huge, but there's really nothing much you can do in there besides like shoot people and drive around, because that gets kind of boring after a while. Uh, this is... That's, like, a great part of this series, because they, you know, they take the time. The maps aren't, like, super big, but there's lots of things that you can do with them, and that's what I prefer. I'd rather have a smaller map, like, with a bunch of stuff you can do, rather than a huge map where you can't really do much, and you have to drive or walk around for fucking five years to get anywhere. I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed 3. But, let's go pick up our first piece of trash here. Nobody else is just walking by it. Oh, look at that. And you see that meter in the bottom right there? That fills up based on what you pick up. There's bigger items you can pick up that'll uh, fill up your meter faster. Uh, this one's actually kind of broken compared to the other ones. Like, you know, in the previous games, you had the coin lockers. You'd find the coin locker key and you'd go get, like, an item from it. This one, uh, the trash regenerates after a while. So if you find, like, a really big piece, you can just kind of cheese the system, pick it up go back into a restaurant, run out, and pick it up again. And that way you can fill up the meter, like, super fast. And that's really helpful. But now that we're talking about uh, things you can do in the city, there's another one over here that I haven't done yet. See this guy just standing here by himself, not really thinking anything. Well, we're going to go talk to him. Yeah, it's for free. And anyway, he's with, like, a sightseeing company. And they're making a new campaign. But to do that, they're going to need pictures. So rather than hiring a professional, which, you know, would be the good thing to do, he's going to ask, he's going to wait for random people to come and talk to him, and then he's going to offer them the position. That sounds kind of freaking stupid, but, you know, that's the theme in this thing. If you want to do something, then, uh, yeah. <laughs> They're just going to bypass the professionality of it all. Let this random guy just do it. Anyways, Kiryu's like, hey, I don't, have a, I don't have a camera. And the guy's like, well, that's fine. Like, I'll just give you one. It's really good. It's like a high-grade one. And, like, Kiryu's like, well, that's probably going to cost a lot of money to rent. And I was like, no, no way, man. I'm, I'm just going to give it to you straight up. Which, yeah, let's get the mechanics of this little thing over and done with, I suppose, but. Anyways, yeah, he's just like, well, I, I, I'm going to agree to do this. I'm going to take pictures for you. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, in each city, uh, there's five different viewpoints you can go to to take pictures of. Like, you're not just going to be running around, whipping out your camera, trying to snap pictures and seeing if they're good. <coughs> what you do is you just walk around, and eventually there'll be, like, a little thing that'll appear on the screen that'll say, uh, uh, in the upper right there, it'll be the kanji for take, toru. And when you hit the button, he'll just take the picture automatically and be like, oh, this is a great picture. There's one up here. Yeah, you can see it just right there. And I'll just take the picture. I don't know if that's the best composition, but... Yeah, look at that. Wonderful picture for a sightseeing magazine. And Kiryu's like, wow, I, I took a great picture. I'm a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> 